Hello and welcome to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo and today we will be taming time signatures. I'm going to attempt to give you a, a good understanding of how Finale uh, handles time signatures. And the first thing we should learn how to do is change a time signature. And you can do that right from the selection tool by clicking a measure and right clicking and pulling up uh, time signature down here in the contextual menu. And you can choose from a common list of time signatures and choose 2-4 and it changes to 2-4 easy enough. We can also find the time signature tool in the main tool palette and do the same thing, right click and that same list of common time signatures appears. And if there's a time signature that you don't see here that you need, you just, just choose edit time signature and the time signature dialog box will appear and we can choose a time signature from here. There's two other ways to get there of course if you have the time signature tool active and you have a measure selected you can double click or you can hit enter or return and the time signature dialog box will appear. Now the time signature dialog box is fairly simple. It's a nice uh, small little window here and not a lot of function and I'll just show you all of it really quick. The number of beats is where we're going to change the numerator and the beat duration is where we'll change the denominator of the time signature and the beat duration is just a pull down menu that gives you uh, rhythmic values and of course the, the numerator number we can change here so we can change that to 64 if we so desire all right and also you'll notice in the time signature dialog box we have the measure region which is similar to the key signature and clefs uh, functionality so you know you choose measure one through whatever measure one through the end or to the next time signature which will be the default setting for this, all right? Uh, I do want to point out real quick, because I've seen people get in trouble with this, there is a difference when you choose 6-8 time like this. So I'm going to choose 6 eighth notes, okay? So I've got 6-8 time. And if I do that, and if I were to enter notes in this particular version of 6-8 time, you'll notice that you get six flags in individually for your 6-8 time, which is probably not what you want, all right? So how do you really do the 6-8 time? Like this. Instead of this, we want to have two beats of dotted quarter notes. And we still get the 6-8 time, two beats of dotted quarter notes. And now when we enter those eighth notes, Finale will beam them as you probably expect you'd want them to be. All right? So that's 6-8 uh, time versus 6-8 time. <laughs> Um, uh, a couple other things I want to show you here. Let's go back to 4-4 four, four time. Now, by default, Finale will display 4-4 four, four time with the 4-4 four, four time signature as opposed to the C for common time. And if I go here, it will display, um, oops, wrong way. It will display 2-2 two, two time by default as opposed to cut time, all right? And you'll notice I've got 4-4 four, four and 2-2 two, two, two here. But there is a way to change this, and there's a global way to change this in the document options, which we'll pull up here. And if you find the time signature pane of the document options, it's the very first two options at the top. Uh, we have an abbreviate common time to C or cut time to C. Those are just characters in the font set. So if we choose, if we choose cut time, for example, and hit apply, you'll notice the 2-2 two, two changes the cut time. And that one will change the 4-4 four, four to common time. And you can do any uh, combination you want or none of them. And that's that will set those time signatures in a global sense. So every time you choose 4-4, four, four, it'll be C if you have that check, for example. Um, all right. Now, there is a way to uh, do, uh, do these individually as well. So let's say, for example, you have... Uh, a piece of music and for whatever reason you have 4-4 four, four time at one section but in another section later on in the piece you specifically want to show common time right so you know th the way I just showed you in the document options we'll do that on a global setting but this is how you would do it individually so let's double click in this measure to get to the time signature box and we want 4-4 four, four time that's correct but we want this to say uh, C for common time so we'll, we're gonna check more options and the second half of this dialog box appears and what the first thing we have here is use a different time signature for display, and that's what we're, what we're going to want to check to accomplish this, right? We still have 4-4 four, four time, but in the second half of this dialog box, we get the option to abbreviate, which is exactly what we'll check. And now we have C for common time, 
and now we're able to have 4, 4, or and common time in the same file. Now, of course, if you had the other uh, global setting checked for, you know, to, to abbreviate common time, we can do this in the reverse manner. So you can uh, select the common time and, and have it display as 4, 4 time unabbreviated, as it were. And the same thing goes for 2, 2 versus cut time or cut time versus 2, 2. So there are, uh, there are ways to do that, all right? Um, the next thing I want to show you is that Finale will handle 4-4 four, four or common time uh, differently than cut time or 2-2 two, two time. All right, so I'm just going to set this up real quick so that the second half of this is 2-2 uh, two, two time. So we have 4-4 four, four and 2-2 two, two time. And the main difference that, that Finale will, will, uh, will make between 4-4 four, four and 2-2 two, two is how it beams notes. So I'm going to enter a bunch of 16th notes into this measure. And you'll notice that that finale appropriately beams it as four sets of sixteenths. But if I were to do the same sixteenth notes in two two, you'll see that finale will beam those notes as two sets of eight sixteenth notes, and that's sort of appropriate for two two time. So just be aware that uh, finale will handle two two and four four differently. However, in some cases, you may want to uh, beam two two or cut time. Uh, as 4-4. Four, four. In fact, in a lot of old uh, publishing, uh, uh, song published music, um, you'll see it's, it's very common to see cut time, except all the beaming is definitely 4-4 four, four time. So that's a, a common thing to, to do. And I'm going to show you the long way to do that right now. So we're going to double click in here. And what we're going to want to do is choose 4-4 four, four time in the main part of the dialog box, and then choose more options, use a different time signature, 2-2, two, two, let's make it cut time, all right, and click OK. So now what you've got is basically Finale thinks that this is a 4-4 measure, but it's displaying a cut time measure. So it, the beams are going to behave as if they were in 4-4, right? It's sort of tricking Finale in a way um, to, to beam as 4-4, but display as cut time. Now I said that that was the long way. There's a very much more, a much more quicker way to do this. In the time signature tool, if we uh, s uh, choose the contextual menu, we'll see that there are actually options for this. Two two beamed as four four and cut timed beamed as four four. If I were to choose one of these, this is going to do exactly what I showed you. It's going to set this dialog box up in exactly the same way that I just did it. Okay, but it's much more automatic. So. Uh, there are options for that as well. Uh, so let me just m look through my notes. I discussed that. Yes, yes, yes. All right. A uh, couple last things I'm going to show you in the time signature tool that would be handy to know. Um, I've got these measures of 3, 4, and 2, 4 uh, with notes in them down in the second half of this file. And I'm going to click in here to get to the time signature tool. And what I want to do is change this passage from 3, 4 to 4, 4. Now there's two ways to do this. There's an option here called rebar music, and you can have that checked or not checked. And I'm going to show you the difference. So if we check this to rebar the music, it's going to do exactly what you'd think it would do. Click OK, and it rebars the music. So those measures of 3-4 you know, still exist in a hemiola sort of way. Um, and just the finale just rebars it in 4-4, right? If I were to not have that option checked and change this to 4-4, Finale is going to handle this differently in that it's going to retain the first three beats of each measure and it's going to give you a space at the end where you're going to have to do something with it. You're going to have to enter more notes there or you know put the rest there or something, right? So just be aware that there's a difference between uh, rebar and not rebarring music. Uh, you do have to be careful in certain circumstances. So I've got 3-4 here. If I were to change this to 2-4, so if I were to go below the, the, uh, the, the number, if I were to, to lower the numerator and not rebar the music, you're going to get some funky results. And what you'll see here is that you've got these 2-4 bars where Finale is, is squeezing in a third uh, quarter note inappropriately, and you're going to have to go through and find those and delete them, and it's, it's just a big pain in the neck. So just be aware of... Uh, how you're using the rebar or not rebar function of the time signature tool when you're changing time signatures when there's music involved, right? And one last thing I'm going to show you about the time signature tool and the rebar function is within this 2-4 measure, 
I'm going to select in here and I'm going to change this to 2, 4 and rebar. And what will happen is what you think will happen. These two bars of 2, 4 will combine into one bar of 4, 4, as will these two bars, right? Rebar music set. And that's exactly what happens. But you will notice that it retains this third and fourth bar. So that rebar function will ultimately uh, try and retain the same number of bars that you have in your file. All right, just another uh, thing to know about how Finale will handle that. And I'm going to check my notes one more time to make sure that I've covered everything. And I believe I have. So I think that's where we're going to end it today. Uh, so thanks for watching the, the basic, uh, that, that's the basic gist of uh, dealing with time signatures in Finale. And come back for the next lesson. I'm going to deal a little bit more with uh, composite time signatures. I'm going to show you some of the other options in the document options for time signatures and a few other uh, nifty tricks. So uh, come back for that one. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.